Welcome back to The Modern Ham, where we are connected in new old ways. Today, I have a Quan Shang, and I've got several of these Quan Shangs, and I haven't made any videos about them, but I saw a very particular project I found very interesting, and I think you guys might too, so stay tuned to check it out. So, if you've been on YouTube lately, and you're into ham radio, you've definitely seen one of these Quan Shang UVK5s. I've got some, and I think about everybody's got some. They're going around like Val thinks. And uh, it's because, one, they are cheap. But number two, they are hackable. And when I say hackable, they are basically split wide open. Um, anything that you can do with the chips on these has almost been done. I mean, people are really hacking away at them. I've got several of these radios laying around uh, that I've experimented with, but I don't really use them. I usually go for a higher quality radio. But this project caught my mind. This comes out of a project on GitHub, so it's open sourced by a Nick Shore, and the link will be below. And it allows remote control of the Quan Chain UBK5 with the programming cable, which is a pretty big deal. Why is this a big deal? Well, number one, we don't really have many handheld radios. I can't even really think of any at all that have remote capabilities over a cable with a computer where you can change the frequency and so on. And uh, the funny thing about this radio is it's kind of opening people's eyes quite a bit at what the possibilities are when these radios are open. So now that this radio is cheap, it's accessible, and is programmable, people are coming out with their own projects. And again, I'm not going to go over the plethora of different hacks that are available already for this thing. But I do want to talk about this one because it really took some ingenuity to pull this off. We're going to walk through the process of getting this set up and uh, I'll show you guys how to do the installs and kind of how it works. But first, let's go ahead and just take a look at a quick demo. As you can see, I have a Quan Sheng here programmed with 146-800. Now the camera's not going to focus. It's connected with a Balfang programming cable, which is the same thing as the uh, UVK5s. And I have an application here running, 146-800. And you'll notice, if I make changes on the radio, this makes changes on the computer, right? And if I go up here and I make changes on the computer, you can see that it will make changes on the radio. How about that? And this goes beyond just changing the frequency. We can do quite a bit of things. Um, but you can also do audio pass-through, for example, and we'll get into that. But remote control software for the $20 radio. How about that? All right, so I'll have a list of all these links in the description. But the first thing we're going to do is download the programming, or sorry, the updating software. So this is from the Quan Sheng website. Um, the link will be in the description. You're going to grab this UVK5 firmware download. So I'm going to go ahead and hit download. And uh, we're going to go ahead and keep it. And so that will be the first download that we do. The second download is going to be the dock itself. So this comes in two parts for the Quan Sheng. One is the firmware that goes onto the Quan Sheng itself, and the other is going to be the uh, computer application for the control. So again, the link for the doc description. We are going to go ahead and it says that download the pre-compiled impact firmware image here. So we're going to download this right here, the pre-compiled. This is just the firmware for the UVK5. So I'm going to hit this link. It'll start the download. Next, we're going to go ahead and grab the docking software. So this is the dock. It should, uh, you'll find this download a pre-compiled release here. We're going to go ahead and hit the download button. Now I believe that is actually it. So. We're going to go over to our downloads, and so the first item we're going to unpack is going to be this UVK5 firmware. I'm going to right-click it, I'm going to hit Extract All, Extract, and we're going to open this new folder it's created. 
and we don't really care about the firmware uh, bin file that's in here. All we really want is one, the cable driver if you don't have it. So it's a good idea to just go ahead and try to install it. It'll worst thing to happen is it tells you you don't have you, you already have it. And next thing you're gonna need is this PS updater. Uh, so you're basically just gonna hit run and run anyways, and we're gonna go through the installation process real quickly. Yep. So the updater is installed. Next, we're gonna go back to downloads, and we are going to right-click this Quan Sheng dock, and we're gonna, uh, and we'll say that for a second. For now, we have the firmware image we downloaded. We're gonna go ahead and hit our Windows button, and we're gonna search for that updater. So I usually just type in update, and you're gonna see it's called Portable Radio Updater. That's the application we just installed. Go ahead and just run that as administrator, and uh, make sure your radio is connected. Now, if you haven't flashed a firmware image for your UVK5, you, what you need to do is you take the radio, all you do is hold in the push to talk button like this, and then you power it on, and then you let go. Now, all you need to do is take your programming cable, whether that be the Baofeng or whether that be the, the Quan Sheng branded one, you'll connect it here, and you'll go to the computer and connect it into your computer. That's all that needs to be done. As long as the flashlight's on, the screen's blank, it's in firmware mode. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the one that's actually plugged into the computer you guys see here. Great, this radio is ready to be flashed. So if you don't know the correct COM port, you can hit your start button and type in device and open up the device manager. And there'll be a drop down list for ports. I have uh, quite a few devices connected, but if you only have the radio, it's only going to be the only one there. In my case, it's just USB serial. That's probably what yours will say, COM3. So I'm going to go in the software here, and I'm going to hit COM3. I'm going to hit connect. Next, this program file, I'm going to hit the three dots here to browse. And this is going to browse to the firmware.pack.bin file that we downloaded just now. And we're going to go ahead and hit update. We're going to sit back. It's going to take just a moment. Great. So if your radio is like mine, it powered on automatically after the update. So we can actually just go ahead and close that out. So now we're going to go ahead and the last file, uh, this Quan Sheng doc, we're going to right click it, extract all, and we're just going to extract it where we're at now. Now, once that's extracted, there is going to be a Quan Sheng doc file here in application. The first time you run it, it's probably going to say you need a .NET uh, installation for a specific version. Go ahead and download it. It's going to take you to the Microsoft website, run the installer that it downloads, and then you're going to run it again. I can't show you that twice because it won't happen for me again. So if this happens, hit more info. This just means that it's not a very common application. Windows is trying to protect you. This is all open source. So there's not really anything malicious in it. So just make sure you do your due diligence to, you know, if you want to scan the scan the source code and compile it yourself, you can. If you do run the binary just like I did, you do run the risk of not knowing what you're running, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit run anyways. And this will open up the control interface. Check enable pass through so that way you don't have to hear anything annoying. Hit close. So now you can actually control your Quan Sheng from your computer. So if I, whatever frequency that I put in here, this will go to the radio. Um, actually, it looks like the entire screen is replicated. And you'll notice, I'll turn off the radio and turn it back on, and you guys will be able to see it over here. Very cool. Basically everything is replicated and you can go into the menu just like you would on the radio. You can hit the buttons, you can change settings. There's even a function key just like there is. It looks like the author tried to basically re-implement everything that was on the radio itself. 
let's take a look and see what it might take to get that audio interface. So if you go over to the Quanxing doc repository that we downloaded the doc from, and you scroll down a little bit, there's a lot more documentation on how this works. So I really advise anybody who's interested in getting this run fluently, take a look at it. Uh, there's instructions here just for creating a, uh, an audio interface with your programming cable. That way you can have your programming cable and audio interface all wrapped up in the one. And you can, you can hear the radio, you can talk through the radio, and um, you can still have all the control. So if you guys are really interested in building one of these, um, the creator, N Nick Schur, I hope I got that right, He's done the due diligence of writing the diagrams and everything that you would need to get all this connected together. And all of the program, all of the firmware, all of the doc software is all open source. So he made this as a passion project, I assume, and published it out there. And here we are. We have remote control $20 Chinese radio, which I think is pretty cool because my three hundred the my $300 FT3D that I complained about a few weeks ago doesn't do that. It costs $300 more. Why, if we're seeing this on the open source side on firmware hacks, why are we not seeing this in the big players on the radios? This is a very neat little function that probably costs a, uh, hundreds of kilobits of memory maybe, I'm not even sure, and it delivered a very nice little product. Uh, I haven't used it a ton. I played around with it enough to change the settings and do the audio pass through, but I like it. It's pretty cool. Anyways, I hope you guys thought that video was interesting or informational. If you see any other cool projects like this, be sure to let me know down in the comments and I'll try my best to cover them. And also I want to give a shout out to my channel member, Scott Pasternak, um, Hanil Ver Dan Van Der Walt, Google Must Die, Van Flick, and Bart Killam. Thank you guys for being uh, channel members. Also, uh, if you haven't noticed, I bought a brand new camera for the channel. So going forward, uh, no more cell phone crappy color issue videos. Hopefully uh, going forward, the audio will be a little bit more crisp as well as the video too. So I'm going to try my best to kind of up the quality on the channel. So, and I want to thank you guys so much for making that possible because all of that kind of recycled back into the channel and hence the quality is better. So shout out to you guys, everybody that watches my videos. Um, thank you so much for the support.